Welcome back everyone to another exciting video here at Beyond the Brick and today is a very special video because I am joined by the legendary Kevin Hinkle and we will be taking you through the entirety of the greatest Lego theme ever made and that of course is the Wild West and Western theme that we have before us right here. So this is, who, who displayed this here at Brick Fair Alabama, Kevin? Yes, this is part of the Lego Timeline Collaborative uh, which is uh, from both Wesley Higgins as well as Jamie Seaborn. Um, so Jamie is the one who uh, brought these absolutely gorgeous Wild West slash Western products, uh, which I think has just caught Joshua and myself utterly speechless. You're exactly right. So we've mentioned several times uh, in videos on this channel, both me and Kevin, that, that Wild West is our favorite theme. We love the sets from it. Uh, we wish they would do more with it. So we really felt compelled to make this video today to take you through Come the entire on. line. Look at this. Can, are we? It's just breath. It's like when you go to an art museum and you're really struck by a painting or a sculpture that just speaks to your soul. You just get just just quiet. Control. Like calm feeling comes over calm. you. And this is just beautiful. This is just I have I have stopped several times in my tracks to look at these beautiful products. Uh, which we should probably talk about these beautiful yes. products. At some point, we will get to the actual products. <laughs> we, we can start by mentioning, so I believe it was just over a span of two years, 1996 and 97, that all of these were released. Uh, 98 as well, but that was in the re-release zone. Because okay. these did get like a repackage. Because um, it was Wild West, but then it was repackaged as Western. And that, I think, was 98. Um, and I think both you and I, I think I had the original Wild West and you had the Western. Yeah. Um, not to get into the the minor details, because what is a label amongst friends? Uh, but um, but so they did have like a, a wave. Well, they had kind of like a season one and a season two. That is when they introduced uh, the Native American sets, and then they repackaged it as Western. Um, God, I'm just so overstruck with emotion looking at these. It's just it's overwhelming. So we'll, we'll start. John's been showing a bunch of them here, and, and the great thing about this is not only do you have the complete set, you also have the boxes for all of them, which is very rare. Uh, so we can start down here at the, the very end. This is the, the, the Mona Lisa of the collection, so to speak. Look at that subtle smile. <laughs> do you see that smile? Oh. Oh my! It's uh, Fort Legorado, Fort Legorado, depending on, depending on who right. you are. I mean, I say Rado. Um, I think you know the definitive answer is going to be if you can go back and reference like a television commercial because Lego would have made it themselves. Um, but when you're speaking with people, you know, anecdotally, you do get both those pronunciations. And I feel like Dorado, coming from El Dorado, like you know the road to El Dorado, that's R A D O. So I feel like that's not a to say Lego Rado to me doesn't sound correct because I feel it should be spelled differently. So I say Lego Rado. I've always said Fort Lego Rado. That is my favorite Lego set of all time. That is your favorite Lego set of all time. We have not, uh, you know, corroborated those stories. We weren't trying to like get our facts straight. Like, Never. This was uh, shared independently, and it's kind of amazing because I don't. Can you recall any other time where people are so adamant that like they have the same favorite Lego set? I can't. No. This is a special connection that we share, Kevin. This is what'll always, always bring us together. But uh, the reason I love this set so much is because growing up, so the, I, I had this set in like my prime Lego playing age, and I treated it very much as kind of like a modular design. So you could take these four sections apart, right. and you could have the individual wall sections. You had the gatehouse, yep. and then you had like the the officers' quarters with the jail underneath, and Wait. you could mix and match. Are we going to talk about the play feature inside yeah. there? So there is um, there is a play feature inside the headquarters where the um, there's a jail cell, as you can see. So there's like a jail cell underneath one side of the headquarters, and there's a little table and some some of the poker cards. And the whole play feature is if you know you're trying to catch the bad guy, right? So one of the bandits, uh, probably the one that has all the the uh, playing card symbols on his vest, and you know he's the card shark kind of guy uh, with a green outfit. I think it's over here on the there left side, yeah. Uh, you know you're you're presumably playing cards with this guy in the office, and he loses or whatever, and you turn the table. And the table releases like a trap door, and the bad guy falls into the jail cell. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it does not, it really, 
almost doesn't get better than that. There's there's one more play feature in a different set that I think is by far the best play feature ever in a LEGO product, but that's a pretty cool one. It really is. Another thing that I loved about this set that I remember playing with a ton as a kid is so there are, if you look closely, there are three entrances. So there's the, the main entrance, yeah. the side entrance, and then actually kind of a secret smaller entrance down the back. And so to me, that was just so awesome because you could create so many different scenarios where it's like they're coming in the front and then you escape out the back. You've got people coming around the side and like a flanking maneuver. So just so many different scenarios when you combine it up with the other minifigs and sets. And this horn, can we talk about this horn? Yes. That chrome horn piece, just pre anything chrome is amazing. It. Appreciate it. It's so good. I mean, it really is. Um, and I think this. It looks like this flag is missing the the decal because it had a decal for the uh, symbol of the cavalry. The crossed sabers. Uh, yeah. Oh, so <laughs> I need this like as a patch, right? That I can wear on like a jacket or something. maybe I'll make that. like a sleeve uh, patch. Like you know, something like that. That's like. Mm. And then that's the uh, the guy who's in charge back there, because he had the one hat that had the symbol printed on the hat. Um, so I don't know if he's title, lieutenant, colonel, general. I don't know. He's the guy that's in charge. And then um, this guy here in the all black in the barrel, um, he's kind of in charge of the bad guys, because he is. Um, so they have a names. You know this, right? The three bad guys have they have official Lego group names. So there's Dewey Cheatham. Dewey, like D-E-W-E-Y. Dewey Cheatham is the guy that was we were talking about earlier, the okay. poker poker player. And then you've got um, Flatfoot Thompson. And then, um, ooh, what's the other guy's name? Um, Flatfoot Tom Black, Black something. Black Bart? That sounds like a pirate name. But he's the guy that's all in okay. black. Um, we might have to verify that. I mean, there may be an addendum. But, uh, but they do have, the three bad guys have official LEGO group names, which I always thought was really great. The great thing is here that in case like you couldn't figure out which side you, you should be on, they give black bandanas to all the bad guys and white bandanas to the good guys, so just to make it very clear who was who. It's great. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Yeah, it's the classic like Western movie white hat, black hat type of thing. That's, yeah. a, that's how LEGO translated that. Yeah, and, and keeping up with the pirates... Um, you know, they had the different cannons in the North American sets that did not fire because, you know, we're not safe kids in, in North America. They knew that would end badly. <laughs> yeah, so we, they carried over the non-functional. Like, they don't have the, the pin you pull in the back and it launches. Um, of course, later on, they were like, oh, yeah, American kids can get it. That's fine. We'll include it. But, yeah, four Lego Rado, my favorite Lego set, Joshua's favorite Lego set, the Moda Lisa of the Western line. Yes, so many, so many great uh, hours spent playing with that set. But then we should move on because there's lots of other great ones we'll here. Spend 45 <laughs> minutes talking about one product. Yeah, thank. Welcome to the 24-hour live stream in which we only talk about Western products. You know, you know, we have a trouble keeping our videos short here, Kevin. That's true. I might do another 24-hour live stream if we're just talking about Western yes. sets the whole time, the whole time. Uh, so let's move to the next one, which is the. Uh, um, this is Gold City Junction. So Gold City Junction has the two different buildings. Got the bank and the general store. Uh, and a bank robbery in process. Um, so it also has this little, like, this uh, wagon. It's got the, uh, it should have the dollar sign. Yeah, it does. That up. great little dollar sign yeah. there on the side, so it's, like, very clear what's being transported here. Yeah, it's so good. Um, and so this one, of course, has some play features, too, where you can steal the money. The, uh, the little chair, like, the um, bench that's outside the bank is on, like, a fake wall. So then that peels out, and then you have, oh, look, access to the safe. <laughs> Uh, and so they steal that, which is pretty great. Um, and there's, I think, the, the little shutters on top of the yeah. general store, so that opens up. It's like a little yeah. gun port. And those were special-sized shutters. Those are not the normal ones that you put in any window. They're, they're actually a little bit shorter, just to make it irritating when you're trying to rebuild these sets in adult life and find the elements, is you can't just go buy a shutter element. It's not the same size. It's a shorter size shutter on the on the top of it and one of the greatest tiles lego has ever made here which is a uh poker. five yeah, yeah oh, <laughs> five man. card poker it really is <laughs> everyone wins every like everyone's cheating because they all have the same amount the same cards in every game it's so good and i think there are some decals somewhere here they should be on the building unless they didn't apply them i know they're on the box there there were like wanted posters that they would include yeah. and like you know rewards for capturing guys flatfoot thompson I think all the ones that are wanted posters have Flatfoot Thompson on all of them. He was the one that, like, it was really, as a kid, it was very easy for me to recognize. Oh, Flatfoot Thompson. He's on all the wanted posters. <laughs> um, the other two characters, their names were only, like, in extra material. So you had to 
put on your detective hats as a little kid and find the name. The extended universe of the Western line. The extended, and the dynamite tile. Yeah. This, uh, this, this one by two light gray tile with the dynamite. Mmm. It's the good stuff, folks. Who doesn't want to have dynamite to blow things up when you're playing with these sets? That's just, these are little details you really need to appreciate. The, uh, the bank teller. The bank teller minifigure, he's got $100 bills in his vest, and he's got a pencil over his ear, which doesn't, he doesn't have an ear, but they printed the little pencil. You know, oh man, come on. I mean, there's just so many reasons why, why these are the best. And it looks like, uh, since I'm on the other side, they did apply the sticker on the side of the oh, bank. Oh, I think John was showing that, yeah. Um, yeah, reward Lego Rado that way with the old school, like, finger pointing that way. And um, I can't read the other one. It's in red, and it's kind of askew. But it's uh, whatever it is, it's genius. <laughs> <laughs> and then this this actually was the the set that introduced or had like the sheriff minifigs. So like the fort did not have the the sort of law enforcement minifigs, whereas this did. Right. And um, and you'll see in there that you've got this guy with the white cowboy hat. And I don't know if it was like canon, but in my childhood brain, that was the deputy. So, like, the sheriff was the guy in all gray, and then the red, brown, and white hat was, like, his deputy. That's how I always played it as yeah, well. Right? I think, I don't know if that was intentional. That's just how I envision it. And you get both of those characters in the next set, which is, uh, that we're going to talk about, which is the sheriff's lockup. So, I feel like that further added to the uh, evidence that this is his deputy. Um, but, yeah, this is, Gold City Junction is another really, really cool set. And, ugh, I really have to just pause because it's just, and yeah, that's the little wanted poster on the front that had Flatfoot Thompson's name uh, and his face without the, um, he has the really messed up teeth. Flatfoot Thompson has the gnarly teeth, like he's missing a few teeth and he, so he's, uh, he's ugly. But he's, he fits the mold perfectly. Fits the, oh man, Bandit's got to be ugly. So you, you, you were from Texas, so you're very familiar right. with that. About ugly bandits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean. All the, the even the aesthetic of the box art with like the cacti and the sun setting in the background with the with the golds and the blue that's just like stellar. Come on, Who, yeah. spaceships. Get at what are you, space castle? Get out of here. No, it's a perfect callback to those like old Western TV shows and movies, and I think they captured that idea yeah. really nicely. So then moving on, we've got the Sheriff. uh, Sheriff's Lockup. You mentioned this. The best play feature of my life. This is, I can't, okay. <sighs> I'm so overcome with emotion. In this set, you've got the little sheriff's uh, you know, office, and then you have this jail cell, this separate independent jail cell. As a kid, I cannot tell you how much I played with this play feature. I mean, that's why Lego does it, right? They put it in there because little kids are going to play with it. But I can't really recall how many other sets I played with as a kid that I'm like, oh, look at the play feature. I'm going to do it over and over. This, forget about it. So you got this little jail cell. You got a little bench over here. Uh, and in the back, there is this slot that has one of the spring, like uh, spring extenders. And you slide the one by two dynamite tile into this slot and it blows open the side of the jail cell. You can see the, the uh, animated, illustrated the CGI. smoke cloud on the box art where it's showing you that the wall's blowing off. That was the funnest thing to do. And I would just put it back, blow it open, put it back, blow it open, put it back, blow it open. It was just so fun. I really enjoy doing that. So I actually have a sad story with that piece. So I have two older siblings. One of them, John, is filming right now, and then an older brother. And I'm not sure who did it, so I don't want to blame anyone in particular. But I was aware of that feature in that set, and that you could do that. But the piece, the spring piece, someone before me had chewed that up or had gotten, like, so, so gnarly that you couldn't use it with the system. So I never actually got to do that, even though I knew that play feature existed. So that was that was my childhood right there. I feel like I just found out that someone has passed away in your family, and I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thank you for your condolences. I didn't until until this moment. I didn't realize how much I was missing out on. Actually, you were robbed. You were like literally robbed of the best play feature ever introduced. Was it John? I, I don't want to blame it. I I don't know for sure, so I'm not gonna like cast any names out there. No, we need to. We know. We need to know. 
We need like we need to find out what that person's favorite Lego set is of all time and have like a ceremonial breaking of a play feature and being like there. Yes. Take that. Nice. That is oh. That's really sad though. That's so I yeah. mean that was, I, I would run across the piece in the collection and be like, Oh, this go, piece is oh. so broken I can never do anything with this. Oh. And you just like shuffle it to the side. Yes. Oh. That's really <sighs> Clanlin. All right. <laughs> That's a that's a sad Clanlin story. It is. You know, most of them end happier than that. <laughs> I do want to give, I like the signage. So we haven't really right. mentioned much of the signage yeah. here, but it's always like two brick high, like really yeah. visible signage. Well, yeah, and these these did kind of break one of those cardinal rules that AFOLs are like, don't you dare do this, which is applying decals across multiple bricks. They, they did that. They did that a lot in these sets. You've got the Fort Legorado sign back on the fort is across two one by eight blue bricks. The general store is across two red bricks. The bank sign. The bank sign has this really unique element on the top, which is kind of like a... I always kind of saw it as a tombstone element because they also used it in the Harry Potter uh, Tom Riddle grave. So that's kind of how I associated that part. But that came out much later than this one. But you've got it across two elements there for the bank sign. The sheriff one went across the two gray. That's a that's a sin, Like right? Like Fans are like, don't put decals across multiple elements. As a kid, I did not care. I still kind of care as an adult now. I'm like, I don't. I would prefer not to. I prefer not to put stickers on at all. But um, it is something that was very, very prevalent in these older sets. Is they did definitely break that rule all over the place. Now, before we move on to the next big set, we should mention it looks like these, these two guys, back here. Uh, these three. Maybe? Yes. Yeah. So there's a little box. Um, Sheriff's showdown is is the one you're looking at right now with the the, the guy throwing the dynamite in the bushes. <laughs> He's just like, I'll get him. He just throws the dynamite in the in the shrubs. Uh, but it's like uh, the main the main bad guy and the sheriff kind of having some kind of confrontation on the on the uh, out in the desert. It kind of looks like the sheriff went out to hunt him down. Like he like the bad guy's kind of oh, yeah. sitting by the fire. It's always like that the classic scene where like they go out, the bad guy commits a crime, goes out and hides, and then the the sheriff has to go out and hunt him down. Oh yeah, and I like how he's got a shotgun. Like in all the sets, the sheriff is always given the shotgun. Uh, so you have like the cavalry men usually have shotguns, and the sheriff has shotgun, and everybody else has the hand pistols. So that's kind of a nice little touch as well. Uh, and then yeah, there's these little two these little two guys here, like a poly bag and a little tiny 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 little box. Look how small that like that doesn't exist. It's so anymore. adorable. It really is adorable. Can you imagine like your childhood hands holding it? You probably thought like that was a giant set back then, uh, but it's um, this small little set. That's, uh, I don't even know the name of it. And you can also see the, uh, one thing I also neglected to mention is the, the old system, system branding on these boxes, right? So it's Lego system and then the sub theme is over here on the right. That's a very, you know, old school nostalgic labeling system. They also have this free Lego free club offer. offer <laughs> <laughs> with yes, we need to make sure we, we send in our free Lego club uh, postcards, which are probably still in the boxes. Definitely. Here's the here's the sheriff showdown you were talking about. With yeah. <laughs> yeah, look at him. Look at him hiding down that barrel. <laughs> the, the, the dynamite shrub. <laughs> and I like how the flames are sideways on the build. It's like it's like coals, maybe. <laughs> Extra attention to detail by putting the dynamite tile in the shrub. Exactly right. Yeah, they they recreate it perfectly. Actually, these are the same, aren't they? These sets are the same. Wheel gun, uh, bandits wheel gun, but in a box form and in a poly bag form. That's interesting. That, that's yeah, that's what I thought. So I, they whatever for whatever really reason re-released it. I love the artwork on the poly bag. Oh, actually, yeah. If you if we can get there, you see the Western branding versus the Wild West branding. So you can see like the first and the second version oh. of the same. So that that debunked. We found <laughs> out. We know. We got it. That's what you're here for, that's, Kevin. <laughs> all the facts. Um, and then in the front here uh, is this, um, the, uh, the exact name is Weapons Wagon. This was a really good one. I actually bought two of these as a kid because I thought, I was like, well, there shouldn't just be one. There should be two. And it's got the nice, like, textile, the actual fabric element over the top of the uh, covered wagon. And it's, uh, once again, a nice little cavalry guy hauling a cannon I, I love the set so much as a kid. Just the, the cloth with the embroidered like like with sabers on there. We uh, need jackets with that. We need something with that with that on it. <laughs> that, that is just so much fun to play with because again it captured the iconic. Everything has like every Western movie, every TV show. It was like that image was associated with it. Yep, you're right. Yeah. Did you have multiple copies of that one or just the one? I think only one. I only remember like the one canvas. 
covering. Yeah. And and when these were out, when this was like you know, on the market, I was of course a youngster, and I remember we got the catalog uh, back in Texas. We had no Lego stores in the state of Texas back then. There weren't a lot of Lego stores, period. Um, but we got the catalog, and I would give my parents cash. And they would write a check for me to buy the item out of the catalog. So we'd put it in the mail and mail it off. And I remember, I remember doing a garage sale in my uh, front yard with my toys. It was just me. It wasn't my family. It was me. <laughs> I did a garage sale in the front yard to get money in cash to buy that that two of those weapon wagons um, and something else. I don't remember, but um, it's so good. Yeah. This next set here, Bandit's Secret Hideout, another fantastic set. I never actually owned this one, so I had, I think, pretty much everything else from the series here, but because I we never got that base plate and didn't have this set, but it it is a great base plate. Yeah, that's so that's the Bandit's uh, Bandit's Secret Hideout. I almost missed the word secret in there. Um, this one also has really good play features in it. So obviously the base plate is really cool because it has like the wagon trail marks and then the horse hooves. Look at those hooves. Again, the level of detail there is amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, so it's a really great base plate. This is the bad guy's place. It's kind of in an old abandoned gold mine. Um, there's a lot of play features on it. You'll see that giant trip wire right there, that huge rope going across the road. <laughs> that is for the good guys to uh, – they, they pull it, of course, when they're riding their horses, and it yanks out from underneath that rail, like that uh, old train rail. And that falls down, and then the cannon rolls out. It's brilliant. Come on. Like there, there was so much foresight that these bandits put into their base there. <laughs> that kid, wouldn't you hope? Like that's exactly what you want. Uh, so the cannon rolls out. There's a barrel. Uh, you know the old school tiny barrels that we've seen. Yeah. You you put it behind the gold mine sign, and this actually it, it's just on a little swivel. So you lift it up, and the barrels fall down onto the guys too. This falls over and it has like weapons and so there's not water in there there's pickaxes and guns and stuff it's just so it's brilliant but this is the bad guy's place this is the bad guy's place this this little turret they made is fantastic it's three, three rifles shotguns. yeah shotguns there it's just like full firepower <laughs> like see him grabbing like this gatling gun with three shotguns it's just great and that was uh done that that like three shotgun thing that they invented they did the same thing on the cart back from the Golden uh, or the Gold City Junction. They had that on top of the, the bank cart. It's like, I guess this is a common uh, invention was the, the triple shotgun. <laughs> the Western turret. <laughs> I do admit, when I, even when I was a kid, I was like, that's kind of goofy, like having the three shotguns, but I still thought it was fun to put it on there. This set here, the hideout, also features prominently the uh, burps or the big ugly rock pieces, as a lot of people, uh, AFALs call them. Yeah, the, the, that special molded element that uh, is just a mountainside. <laughs> And it's appropriate. It's a gold mine. So have we seen the addition of any new characters in, in these sets outside of just the, you got the sheriff, the deputy, and then there's, there's just the three bandits, right? Yeah, it's just, it's just the three bandits. Yeah. That doesn't change. Um, and then in, in this whole kind of lineage, too, uh, aside from the three bandits, the cavalry guys, and then the sheriff and his deputy, really the only other set you get anybody is this Gold City Junction where you get the bank teller, and then this little guy that with the blue and the brown vest who, who runs the uh, wagon. And then every, you just get the same characters in every other one. Um, and I remember kind of being a little bummed. Like I wanted more Western civilians that I couldn't really find. Because it was it. This is the only set that you got unless you wanted a million cavalrymen. Which you would do kind of want for Which army you, building. I mean, that would be good for them. Yeah. Uh, but then you can only have so many sheriffs. Like you don't need <laughs> 50 sheriffs. Um, and then the deputy, you could kind of get away with doing it maybe three different times, but then it's a little too repetitive. No, exactly. So, yeah, eventually if you bought all the sets, then you would have kind of run out of things to do with some of the yeah. minifigs. So and, I think... And what's interesting, um, before we dive in kind of into like the next, the next uh, evolution, is um, like... <laughs> this. I mean, this is kind of like what a lot of fans do. We're like, well... Classic space is the only space. Like, so for me, it was like, this is kind of like, this was Western for me. Like, before we kind of go on, like, that was that was Western. Um, and I have a, a very soft spot for it. Uh, when I went to college, we've talked about this before, um, and I studied animation, I actually made a Western film. Um, and I went back and revisited these sets, and I made sure to put these sets in the film. 
Uh, so I kind of built them up. I made them a little larger, um, fleshed them out because a lot of these don't have backs. A lot of the bit like the sheriff, the hideout, the bank, general store, none of them have backs. Kind of a facade. Like a the kind of dollhouse kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Facade, yeah, it was perfect. Um, so I fleshed them all out and I put them in my, my uh, little brick film because uh, it was like, I got to do a Western, got to do a Western. Um, and I, I also hope to one day build up a big, you know, nice Western. And I've seen some good ones. You've seen some good ones too because I've seen the videos. Um, but I'd like to revisit this and, and flesh it out really nicely. Um, I think I saw a fort at some event that uh, a fan had used like the brown lightsaber poles to, to mimic wood and just had like rows of them and it looked like phenomenal. Um, just trying to get that log pattern but not using the log bricks. But um, Right, a little more custom creation. Yeah. And I, uh, you mentioning the animation there reminds me that these also these sets also bled over into at least one Lego video game. I think probably more than one with the Lego chess game. Lego chess. Yes, so which is actually a game I played a lot growing up as well. Yeah. Uh, where you could play as like the Western guys right. versus other I think like pirates. I yeah. forget who all else was involved in there, but I know the Western guys were definitely like one side you could play. And then yeah. what I loved about it was whenever a character was taken, it had different animations. Mm -hmm. So if you if you had mm -hmm. like. Uh, like a rook was like a guy, like a cannon guy, and so it would yeah. show this like cannon animation and all these different things when you took a guy. I remember that. So I didn't have the chess game when I was a kid, but when I actually started working for Lego in 2005, um, back at the Lego store in Denver, Colorado, we had the chess game, the old PC chess game, uh, for sale. <laughs> and I was like, interesting. <laughs> As long with uh, Loco, like the Loco train game, and there was like a Lego creator game. And I was like, you know, what the heck? I'll buy these games because what, what are these about? I mean, I noticed that the date was really old on the uh, things. And on my new modern-day computer, I was like, let's see what this chess game was all about. It's got Western on it. And it ran so buggly and it was, like, glitchy. And I'm like, this is really weird. And I remember, like, asking other fans and looking online. And I'm like, wow, these games are just really buggy no matter how good your computer is. But I do remember the animations of, like, uh, like I, I can picture in my mind like the inside of a saloon or something and doors opening up and like a minifigure slide animation walking in and I was like that's the western guy you yes. know very crudely animated but uh, yeah that to was, me as a kid though it was just it, was it just was blew crazy. my mind like I didn't know it was probably like watching Fantasia for you you're like this is the most magical movie I've ever seen this needs an Oscar uh, but I, yeah so I experienced that a little later in life I still had like a, a soft spot for it but I was like this looks so bad um, but yeah, that's a good point though, though in the game and, um, that yeah, Western man. So I think so you mentioned the original line is kind of yeah. your favorite. So then now we'll move into here and, and what, what did we have when these sets over here came out? So now you kind of have like the, the wave two, right? So the first one came out and then the wave two came out and this is when they started getting into the native American sets and there's not too many actually. Um, there was definitely more, yeah, there was more in the first wave than in the second wave. But, um, so we've got this one in the back which is Chief's Teepee. Um, and to be honest, I don't know a heck of a lot about these sets because they weren't interesting to me. Um, I was a diehard fan of the, the Western sets, but then when these came out, um, I didn't see, you know, this is something like I didn't realize at the time, but now in reflection, in adulthood, uh, I'm, I'm sitting there going, I don't understand where the, where the conflict play is. Where's the storyline? And a lot of people, of course, are like, well, Kevin, you know, cowboys and Indians. But I just didn't really play that, you know, and, and I didn't, like, I never saw Native Americans as bad guys. Like, I, I just didn't. Like, that was just, I saw cowboys and bandits. Like, that they're, These guys have ugly teeth, bandanas, <laughs> and they're putting dynamite in shrubs. They're bad guys. Like, these, this is peaceful people going about their lives, like, you know, hunting, feeding their families. And so I'm like, oh, these aren't bad guys. And in the sets, as you can see, they didn't include cowboys. They didn't include cavalry. They didn't include the bandits. They didn't include really anybody. Like, they're very secluded. Like, it's, it's them by themselves. And so, as a kid, again, this is like in hindsight and in reflection, I was like, I didn't have an interest in it. And I was like, well, why didn't I have an interest in these? And I'm thinking, it's like, well, because I didn't see any storyline in it. I just saw, oh, these, it's peaceful and it's nice, but I'm not going to fight the snakes. Like, that's not interesting <laughs> to me. I don't want to get a whole set about snakes. Um, and so I didn't own any of these. But that's a good point you made there. Unlike the Western s sets, they didn't include two sides within the same yeah. set here. And so there, there was none of that conflict, like when you first opened the box up. You, you had to make that jump to like the, the Hollywood style cowboys versus Indians, you know, like movies, yeah. TV shows, that sort of thing. I think it's really fascinating, isn't it? And, and it's, um, 
it's it's at least what I think is it's what led to me not having an interest in it. So I I didn't ask for any of these on my wish list. I didn't ask for I, I think I moved on to whatever else like insectoids or something. But um, I was like, nah, I don't I don't need those. Aren't, those aren't as interesting. There was a couple of parts that I thought were interesting even back then. Like I loved the the broken decrepit tree trunk element. Yes. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. And and you know I think it was mostly so you could hide a minifigure in there or whatever. Um, that's cool. And I'm I'm fairly confident these were the first sets that the canoe element showed up in. I think it was used in some city sets and stuff like that. Some islanders sort of stuff. And some, yeah, pirates and islanders. But And I could be wrong, but I, it's one of the first times I remember seeing the canoe. And I'm like, oh, that's that's different. Um, what's super important is these minifigures have noses. <laughs> we need to take a moment and show them noses. All right, all these minifigures have noses, all of them. And it's, it's one of those things that is a huge no-no. It is against Lego brand guidelines to design minifigures with noses. Um, it's even like a huge debate when it's like, oh, it's a clown. Should it have a, a red nose? Like, it's a huge debate because they are not supposed to have noses. But look at all them noses out there. You see all those noses there? There's a lot of noses. It's like every single one has a nose on it. That is crazy. So what, do you have any idea why they made the exception for, for this line? No. I mean, this is well, well before my time, my, yeah. my, my short stint of a dozen years at Lego. But it was just, um, it, was, it, was an, it was enough that I remember when I was working at Lego in the, like, the brand guidelines documents, there was photo examples of these minifigures as what not to do. It's like, don't do these. And it's like, oh, but those are, those are Native Americans from the Western sets. It's like, well, oh, well. Oh. Um, I remember what always stood out to me when I was playing with these sets, because I did have a mixture of both the Western sets and the Native Americans. Sure. It was always the accessories that, and like the, the design of the horses and minifigs that stood out. So like the painting on the faces, yeah. as well as like the headpieces, the painting on the horses. So it's all that like extra level of detail that, to me, kind of made them stand out among the other kind of right. Lego sets that I had at the time. And that's a, a super good point. They are like more, like more detailed, maybe even overly detailed. Um, like the horses that you pointed out, I didn't like their eyes because like they, like, the regular, like, you know, classic Lego horses just have a, a black dot with the white glint. And then with these, it still has the white dot, but now they've kind of added the outline to the eye, almost like too human. And I'm like, these horses have human eyes. Um, but it's like an extra level of detail that, um, you, you know, you can appreciate in certain circumstances, but in others, I'm like, ah, it's a little weird. Like noses, a little weird, but um, but yeah, I mean they they really went um, they went up definitely with with some unique molds. I mean you look at all the headdresses that they've got. They've got two, three, four different headdresses, um, and a lot of yeah very detail printing for like on the shields, um, the shield elements. They're not supposed to be shields, but you know uh, and on the and the, also we get textiles again, right? We go back into the textiles like with the covered wagon, but now we've got it with the uh, the teepees, which is really nice. I think, yeah, I, think you, I think you could definitely make an argument that they overly bought into the, some of the stereotypes of Native Americans here with the headdresses and the painting, the eyes, like you yeah. were saying. Absolutely. And, uh, and yeah, since I didn't, I didn't own these, I can't really speak to the wonderful play features and things that move. I don't even know. I mean, I can see that things have swivels and, and joints and stuff. Yeah, so this here was like a, it swung out and there was like a, you could hide guns or whatever you wanted in there. So you swung the totem pole and that little drawer opened up. I see. Interesting. So you could fight the snakes. Yes, obviously. <laughs> so you could fight the snakes. There's also a fantastic base plate. So we mentioned the bandits hideout uh, yeah. there, and then this one here that has the canoe going through the the kind of river, really but like nice. almost like a waterfall coming down the back. And again, I think to your point, the the level of detail and or the execution of the detail is different. Like if you look back at the base plate in the bandits hideout that had the trails and the horse hooves and the rocks. That's a very different art style than the base plate in the Native American set with the water and the shrubs. Like, it looks different. It doesn't yeah, even look yeah. like the same artist did it, which I get that, you know, it's a big company and there are a lot of artists. But the point is, is that you're supposed to have a universal brand guideline and you're trying to match the style and stuff like that. But it doesn't even look the same. Like, it's like the, the lines have a, di a different width to them. Um, like, these are kind of everything's outlined, you know. And over there, it's just like there is no outline. Like, the shrubs is just green. It's just, it's just different. It's like everything about it is just different. It's, it's, it's interesting. 
Um, you mentioned fighting the snakes earlier, and it wasn't until now, kind of looking at all these sets, how many snakes there are. There really are. Like, a lot of like somebody in Denmark must have just thought there's snakes like everywhere in the U.S. And, and look, just... on the box art back here for this set, which is uh, what is this one? The Rapid River, Rapid River Village. River Village. There's a snake like jumping out over there out of that tree. <laughs> I mean, you got snakes leaping from the skies in these sets. I guess that's the conflict, right? Because you know. That, that is something that I am very well aware of, is that for LEGO sets to perform well, you do have to have instant conflict in the set. You need to have story, good versus bad, you know, good versus evil. And that's why you get, like, these city sets that always have a criminal in there. Or if it's a criminal set, you know, like, mostly bad guys, you're going to have a police officer in there with a the little tiny moped. Like, you have to have that conflict and that storyline in the set for it to be successful. So what are you fighting? The snakes, I guess. I guess that's what you're fighting. They leap from the skies here. It's snakes for days. Look at the snakes in the shrub. <laughs> you like dynamite in the shrub. Now try snakes in the shrub. <laughs> you, in season one, we put dynamite in shrubs. In season two, it's the snakes. I mean, there's a snakes on a plane joke in here somewhere that we're not, a, we're not you know, being able to jump on. But So, yeah, there's, um, there's a couple sets. Yeah, we looked at the, uh, the, the Chief's teepee. We're looking at the Rapid River Village, and there's some smaller ones. Like, very tiny kayak set yeah, very, here. That one's uh, this one up here, uh, which I don't know the name of. Indian Chief, I think. No, this is Indian Chief. So this is Indian kayak, of course. <laughs> and it's got the uh, the like the pizza the pizza paddle, you know, when you take out the feet, but it's used as an oar. I don't know which is. That first. was the standard oar during this era, though, wasn't it? With all the pirates and imperial. Yeah. yeah. Very much. I see it as like, the one for like the pizza restaurant, oh, okay. like that, because you know, I I feel like your first viewing of the application of the element is forever your definition of the element. So for me, that's like the big paddle that you take the pizzas out of the pizzeria in the city set. That's what that is. Yeah, for me, it was all Pirates Imperial Oars. Yeah, so that's what I, I did growing up. And then I think the other one here was the Rain Dance Ridge. Right. Oh, do we have a snake? We have multiple snakes. We have multiple now snakes. we've got at least two. Look, there's a two. snake. Shoot. <laughs> there's a snake. It's going into the river. So, I mean, I, I can appreciate them for sure. I think it's it's nice that it's it's part of the lineage of Western and Wild West, but as a child, I didn't own any of these. I didn't really have a huge interest. And I think it's just because I couldn't identify where the immediate storyline was. And I know that's like, Kevin, Cowboys and Indians, but I just didn't really watch a lot of Cowboys and Indian stuff. I was like, the Cowboys and the Bandits, and like, I, I got that. The bank robbers, the guys that were doing the train heist, right? Like, I got that. That's the kind of Western I remember watching and growing up with, um, you know? These aren't evil people, Joshua. They're you weren't buying. You weren't buying into their like fake, you know, <laughs> culture. Fake campaign. Yeah, to try to like bring conflict between the races. These are not our enemies. <laughs> look how they are trying to go about their lives and be peaceful. These are not our enemies. But yeah, so this is the, look. This is it. Very short lived. Just a couple years here. Cut. Cut too soon. Right. But it, it did live on in other ways, like we mentioned, the video game. And then also uh, Legoland Parks. I know at least the one in Denmark. And do others have a big Western section as well? I know the one in Denmark, uh, Legoland Billen, has a very large Western section that is extremely popular. Yeah. I So I've been to – I've never actually been to a Legoland resort other than Billen. Oh, okay. Um, I've been to Discovery Centers, but I haven't been to the Florida location. I haven't been to the uh, California. So I don't know. I assume they do. Maybe I'm wrong, but it was really fun in Billin when you go to the western section, mm -hmm. and they have like some really cool callback signs and stuff they've made. Uh, definitely my favorite area, and uh, like the old like the places you can eat food. I mean, it's it's a theme park, right? They ham it up and they do all like, but it's like I get so giddy and like I smile when I'm walking around the western area. Um, I remember the first time I visited Legoland Billin, and it was delighted. just yeah. I just all of a sudden walked into the western section, and like you said, so many great callbacks. You were delighted. It's amazing. <laughs> Absolutely delighted. So I, I mean, maybe someone who has visited and, and can comment if it's in the Florida or the Cal. I, I assume it is, but maybe they don't. I don't know. Well, yeah, people in the comments, you can let us know if you've been to the other Legoland parks. Is there any kind of western section there or not? But I think that pretty much wraps it up for us. This has been a great run through of all the sets. I mean, you you can tell how much we enjoy these here, but mm. it's just so many great memories attached mm. to these. It's so good. <laughs> and it's great to see all the boxes and all the sets and and this has been a wonderful little uh, you know, collaborative display that's been at both Brick for Alabama and Brick for Virginia too for the last couple of years. And it continues to grow and uh, and it is kind of nice with the boxes and the sets to just kind of uh, you know, both inspire and also 
you know, bring you back to your childhood a little bit. It's really cool. Hopefully they're still here when the show's done and I haven't taken them all home. <laughs> if they're gone, we'll know where they went. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Kevin, for going through these sets with me. Uh, I've always loved how we bond over our favorite set here and favorite theme. I feel like it's really been the bedrock of, of the Beyond the Brick Kevin relationship. <laughs> it's, it's, one of, it's one of few questions that you get from your viewers when I happen to be in like a live stream with you or whatever, where I always just answer. Joshua, what's your favorite set? I'm like, four legged writer, the best set ever released. Who's this Kevin guy? What does he know? I'm the guy with the wrench. All right, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't ask questions. Don't ask questions. Because I've done, that's the only question I'll hop in the chat and I'll answer when people are like, what's your favorite set? His favorite set is this. So, yes. but yeah, really good stuff. Awesome to see it again. Uh, we need to just sit here and appreciate this probably for another couple hours. We do. So we'll just, John might shut we the camera off, the camera but we'll off. be here just staring at these for a while. Tools. And just like sit here. And just maybe have like a fine glass of wine. Because that's really the level that these sets are at. Appreciate the fine art, folks. There we go. Well, thank you once again, Kevin. It's been fantastic. Have a great day, everyone.